I don't necessarily feel that everyone has this knowledge. It's definitely knowledge that you need for modern Yu-Gi-Oh! So I think I want to share that here in this video because I know a lot of people watch these videos to try to get better at the game. So yesterday I played against this deck, the Attic Nister deck. And um, you guys have seen me play against this deck on stream. Um, and I definitely took a loss yesterday or maybe it was the other day when I played against this deck. So the thing I want to talk about is choke points and negation. Um, a lot of people talk about like a high uh, gameplay levels of Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, and the pro levels, whatever level you want to call it. Uh, and they talk about choke points. And what are these choke points? There are these critical moments in some inside of someone's combo where you can negate a particular card and continue playing. So two things you want to think about, you know, when you're playing uh, a combo deck, um, you're going to be negated twice. You're going to be interrupted at least twice by at least something like an Ash, Imperm, you know, as, as he has here, Forbidden Droplet, um, DD Crow and things like that. And as someone playing against the combo deck, you want to find a choke point. So where's the choke point in this deck? What do you want to Ash? What do you want to stop? In this particular deck, you want to stop the Dark Templar because in the combo, pretty much they use Dark Templar um, pretty much as the final end to their combo piece where they special summon a monster to uh, a Link cursor he's pointing to and then summon like four monsters. Yeah, summon as many level four monsters as possible. So pretty much they can summon their whole field full of monsters. This So this is the effect that you want to stop. So what I've done recently inside the Gladiator Beast deck, I've changed the deck out a lot and I've moved to a 50 card build. I'm gonna show you that build and then I'm gonna show you this deck and our duel and then we'll just get right into it. All right, so this is the Gladiator Beast 50 card deck, my boy. Now what's insane about this deck, I again, teaching you the same method. I've learned about these choke points and of course being negated at least twice. What I found out is at 50 cards, I'll have enough room to play extenders, enough room to play um, the monster destruction like lightning storm, back row destruction like lightning storm. And then of course we're running cards like dark ruler no more. Uh, I am using Ash Blossom in this deck, but I'm not using Max C because this deck is all gas, no breaks. Um, how did I actually incorporate new combos? I decided to bring back Andale and bringing back Andale, I'm going to call this the Andale package. So um, pretty much three Gladiator Beasts Andale, maybe a Rescue Rabbit. I don't have a, an extra rabbit right now, so I'm using a cat. And then, of course, we're going to use... Um, one pass, one time passcode, you're going to use unexpected die, and we're going to use one copy of Sky Striker uh, Mecha Hornet drones. So the reason why we're using this combination of cards instead of just three unexpected die, because unexpected die will brick. And if you open up your hand with the Gladiator Beast Andale in it and can make a token, you can go into Link Spider to summon. And that's just another avenue to summon another um, bait for your opponents to negate, and then hopefully you can get out what you need to do um, without your, with your multiple extenders. Now, you guys know how the Gladiator Beast deck works. It's very similar um, to how it was before. The only difference is I've added in a new combo. I've up my. I've added in three impermanents, and then I'm playing three Dark Ruler no more. Now, the reason why I'm playing imperm and not another hand trap is because I realized again more top level gameplay here that running a negate inside of a trap is stronger than running a negate inside of a monster. An imperm can technically negate a back row spell or trap, and technically um can be used at any time as long as you have no cards so imperm is just a really powerful card so in terms of my hand trap negation i think imperm is like your best bet it's also versatile for the same reason you'd want to use dark ruler no more imperm works in that situation so it's less of a brick and then you still have ash it's the classic to stop your cards like um uh maxi and other special summons or annoying cards and they were also running called by the grave because everybody plays hand traps and that's just a really good combination but outside of that it's the same great gladiator beast deck we are still running our main phase two combo using dragon s to fill up our board and then of course um uh, 
will end it off with the Apex Avian or the Barrier Statue of the Storm wins. And then we also have the Tri Brigade um, boys as a backup with the Appaloosa. So let's just jump into the duel, my boy, and I'll show you guys some uh, real top tier dueling. All right, so I really felt like this was a great duel because just so much happened in this game. And honestly, um, you know, you have to know the matchup. So that's so that's what I've learned. I learned this matchup because I played against this matchup yesterday and the, and the loss was so shocking, it caused me to remember all the cards. So basically all these cards search, so this is kind of useless. You don't want to stop this even if you had Ash because he's probably got other extenders or whatever. So you just want him to go out and commit and put his giant link on the board. So like this guy, it has a quick effect and uh, the quick effect, it can basically move to a point it's pointing to. And um, I don't know if it can jump over here, but, uh, you know, who knows? But anyway, if it has a quick effect, you don't want to act first with your negate. So you see he's playing all these cards. He's playing a field spell. He linked it off. Here comes a side. So this is wind. said wind kitch. Wick. Wicked. He brings out the wicked. He brings out some more Adagnister stuff. He's continuing the combo. And you see I just have the one in perm. Because it's not about having a negate. It's about negating the right card. And it took me a little while to learn that. And the only way you're going to learn that through matchups, and the only way you're going to learn that through matchups, you're going to have to hold some L's, my boy. Or you're going to have to watch a lot of videos. So I don't have time for the videos. So I'm just getting right in there for game. So he brings out this uh, Splash Wizard. And in my last duel, if you were watching that stream, I negated the Splash Wizard. When the person um, activated the effect last time is summoned from the grave. I think I hit it with called by the grave or something. I did something to mess with Splash Wizard's effect, but that wasn't enough and he continued his combo and he still did his um, link three play, uh, bringing out the dark at Ignister and then summoning all the other little Ignister babies. So here he goes for his, uh, no, this is for the Wind Pegasus. So Wind Pegasus is good and this is a key card here. So it says, during the main phase, uh, you can destroy spell or traps. Your opponent controls up to the number of Agnes or monsters uh, you control. If another cards you control is destroyed by battle or card effect, while this card is in the graveyard, you can banish this card and target one card your opponent controls. Shuffle it into the deck. And then um, you can only use once per turn. So this is a key card right here. And I remembered this card as we continue to play. So just you're going to have to watch... The gameplay right now so he puts the at ignister in the grave so his board state is this he summons out the dark templar so now he has dark templar and if i kill dark templar <coughs> or any of his other cards he can back it up with the win pegasus ignister so now that i know that this is what he has on the board i have to play this to my best advantage or i gotta negate it one way or the other so pretty much what we're doing here um, is waiting for him to summon a card to his um, blank zone. And this is the time to do it, but I'm only going to do it when he activates the effect. I'm not going to do it, uh, you know, prior to that because, you know, you don't want to, you know, don't want to blow the load early, my boys. Come on. You know what's up. Don't blow it early. So go ahead, infinite imperm, shut this down. And this negates him and then it forces him to end his turn here, which leaves him extremely vulnerable which is why I started to use Imperm, and which is also why, you know, I'm just learning this game more. Because in the event I had an Effect Veiler, this wouldn't have done the same thing. But Infinite and Permanence definitely um, did a whole lot more in this situation and literally ended his turn with that move. So now I'm dealing with this board state where I have to get around this at Ignister. And you gotta remember too, that if I kill a, if I kill a monster, he's gonna wreak havoc with this card. So watch how we play around it, boys. So it's my turn. Obviously I've got the storm and the ruler no more. So we're gonna lightning storm and blow up the back row. He's gonna go ahead and special summon. And there's nothing we can really do about that. Uh, right now his board is not live. His board is pretty weak. But he does have one graveyard effect, one bit of protection. So we have to be cautious to that. So now he's going to add another card to his hand. Blew up his back row. It was great. Summon a rescue cat tribute. Not, uh, not Ash Blossom, but Max C. So right here, 
since I have this in, I, in my mind, I have the advantage. Whatever he's going to grab in his deck, he's going to have to grab it. I am playing a race against time against Nibiru because I know my end board is strong enough to beat him. But I've got to do these things. I've got to clear his board, get around the Ignister effect, and then also I have to um, make sure that... Uh, uh, yeah, I got to clear his board, get around the Attic Mister effect, and I've got to set up my game winning board. So here we go, boys. Maxi Rescue Cat. Now, this comes with the knowledge. You're going to see him even make a mistake because he doesn't have full knowledge of my deck, which is I'm using to my advantage now. So I'm going to go ahead and use the Tinky. Um, I think I added this to the hand, and then we're going to go ahead Rescue Cat style, and he's going to Ash Blossom my uh search uh so that's fine you know he's preventing me from putting more stuff in the grave uh but i still have the special from the hand which he cannot stop then i'm gonna banish two and bring out the dragoness now remember if a card dies he's got the little he's got the little Ignister pegasus in here but dragoness says you can't place uh any effects until the end of the damage step after he attacks so basically i'm getting in there and there's nothing you can do about it so, so no Ignisties for him. We're going to go ahead and begin our combo and take this maxi challenge head on. So we're dumping, we're dumping, we're continuing this combo. I learned that 50 cards, my combo flows better. And I did, and I didn't understand that. I didn't know that until I found that wisdom recently. So we're going to go ahead and use gladiator beast tamer editors effect. And then, as you guys know, we're going to summon out Domitianus. So now we're safe from Nibiru. And I'm really not fearing he has Nibiru because we're down 17 cards into his 40-card deck, I think. Yeah, it's a 40-card deck. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, so we're basically 17 cards into this 40-card deck. And I haven't been Nibiru yet. So I dropped this uh, Domitianus to protect myself from Nibiru. But also to protect myself from this card because I am going to clear this field. Because I have a plan at the end of this, I need to put out the statue. No matter what, I need to put out the statue and clear his fear, clear his field. And he doesn't know that's my end goal, but that's my end goal. Um, so he does not really have a point of interaction against me because he doesn't know what I'm trying to do. So here comes my Test Panther. Test Panther is going to add the comeback. Comeback activates to bring back Tamer Editor. And then he's going to go ahead DD Crow. But I have the Minty Anus. And since he didn't Nibiru, I'm going to go ahead and negate that. So here's my reasoning. If he had Nibiru, he would have hit me with it already. So I got to stop the crow. I mean, there's just nothing else to talk about. If you've got Nibiru, bring on that big, thick rock beast. We're just going to keep going. But as you saw with his deck list earlier, there is no Nibiru. So I'm bringing out the Herc. And then we're going to test Panther, send this back. We're going to bring out Darius and remember... Earlier in this duel, we used the power of one of our gladiator beasts to dump Bestiari in the grave. We used Gladiator Beast uh, Noxious to dump Bestiari in the grave. And because we did that all long ago, now Darius is going to bring back Bestiari so he can blow up these monsters. So now we're going to clear these monsters off the board. And then with a wing beast and two uh, link two monsters that link two on the field. It doesn't matter what what he does here. So we're gonna blow these up. He's gonna add Ignister and he's gonna kill. Um, well, he basically removed uh, Domitianus. So now Domitianus is gone. I cannot negate any more effects. And now I'm gonna just gonna go into my link three. And as I go into the link three, it's just some more Sovereignty Bird and then Sovereignty Bird's effect with uh, Blossom. And we're just gonna go ahead and turn and add uh, the statue. So. In this deck, in my experience, I know that at the end of the day, and he's actually already lost one of his Forbidden Droplets. So looking in his grave, you know, he's got a Forbidden Droplet. There's a chance he could have a Droplet up here. There's a chance he could have anything up here. But he has all these cards in his hands, 15 cards left in his deck. I'm just going to play the game of fate. I got two spell negates, but he has to get over this to win. And it's going to be really hard for him because he played a lot of his stuff early so we're gonna see what happens so as we're playing here all he has here now 
is a lightning storm. We're going to go ahead and negate that. Gotcha. Negate it. Then here's another lightning storm for you. The man has two lightning storms. Go ahead and negate it. Now, you're looking at lightning storm, and you might say you can only activate one lightning storm per turn. How is he doing this? How is this possible? Well, he has no cards on the field, and I negated the first one so he can play a second one. So lightning storm number two, and he misses. And now, because he can't do anything else, it's a goddamn shame. So, my boys, that's it for today's dueling lesson. It's the points of interaction you want to make sure you're watching for. In this case, it was the Dark Ignister. But you got to remember, look at some other decks, look at some other videos, and check out those points of interaction and get in there for game, my boy. And as always, keep it dead. <laughs>